Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Arcade with Alvin, where this time we're going to be attempting to make the super spicy curry from Super Smash Brothers. If you ever played Smash Bros with items, shame on you, you might have picked up a flaming plate of curry that made your character instantly spew out flames from its mouth as you ran around with your head on fire. In the game, I found that quite entertaining, so let's see if we can make one in real life that does this justice. Since this curry is literally on fire, I assume that there was alcohol of some sort involved in the process, which led to us doing some research and setting settling on old monk chicken curry, an Indian inspired dish we found off of YouTube. You can find our reference videos below in the description, but to start we're going to go ahead by chopping up two and a half pounds of chicken thighs. But first we must make a very important component for this dish, ginger garlic paste. 125 grams of ginger first gets peeled and chopped into small chunks, followed by 120 grams of garlic, also peeled. This goes into a mini food processor with a little bit of salt and just a tablespoon of oil and blended until a nice little paste forms. If it's a little thick, I like to add a little splash of water just to make sure that this becomes a paste. But this paste right here is one of the most important things in a lot of dishes across Indian cuisine, if I recall correctly. Now, to marinate our chicken, I'm adding in about two tablespoons of this ginger garlic paste, along with two teaspoons of gar masala, two teaspoons of black pepper, two teaspoons of turmeric, two teaspoons of coriander powder, one tablespoon of cashmere chili powder, and 75 milliliters of dark rum. This is looking a beautiful orange color, so we're gonna take this and put it in the fridge so it can set and get some time to get the flavors all happy. For the curry base itself, I'm starting by chopping up one medium red onion, also known as one onion. Moving to the stove, we're heating up one half cup of vegetable oil or mustard oil, and first fragrantly sauteing two bay leaves with one teaspoon of cumin seeds on low to medium heat, just to bloom the flavor a little bit. After about one minute, I'm adding in our onions and a pinch of salt and just sauteing until softened, not brown. While that's going, I'm gonna take eight green chilies and slit them down the middle just so that they can release their entire firepower into this curry because this is a super spicy curry, not just a spicy curry. Oh boy, here we go. The green chilies go in for another one minute until fragrant, and then I should have, but I forgot to add two tablespoons of ginger garlic paste to stir fry. Go ahead and yell at me, I forgot. Even though this won't taste as good as it should, we're gonna continue by adding our tomato paste. One quarter cup to be exact. This gets stirred and combined until nice and fragrant. Then we go in with our dry spices. Two and a half teaspoons each of coriander powder, turmeric powder, black powder, garam masala, and cashmere chili powder. Now that we essentially have a roiling bath of spice and flavor, in goes our marinated chicken, straight in. To loosen this up, I'm adding 200 milliliters of water and probably just a little bit at the end so that we can get a sauce base going. I'm gonna go ahead and let this braise for about 30 minutes on a low heat just so that the chicken is tender and everybody gets to have fun with each other in this bathtub. Just to make this extra super spicy, I'm adding in another quarter cup of chili powder. Now that the curry is slow simmered and has reduced just a little bit and our chicken is cooked through, we're going to take this off the heat and get to the super fun part. First onto a plate, we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a huge heaping of basmati rice that we cooked according to package instructions in a small pot. Then we're going to generously ladle about 75% of the plate surface area with our chicken curry, which is smelling really good about now. So onto the actual flaming hot part. The curry itself should be really spicy, but we need to achieve those flames as is from the game. So what do we do? Well, first we turn off the lights to make this more intimate. To first create fire, you need to set the right mood. Now my initial plan was to ignite about half a cup of rum over this flame, but it does not seem to be catching fire as I had hoped. Let's see if we can turn up the burner here. Uh, seems a little bit unsafe, so we're going to try a pan method. Okay, let's just put the rum in the pan. Hopefully that ignites as well, because I'm pretty sure I've done this before, whether on accident or on purpose. This also does not seem to be working. Rachel has now come to assist, and she has informed me that using a different fuel source before the fire, like a lighter, may achieve different results. Aha! Now this, this is what I'm talking about. Just like with baked Alaska or any other dishes that require a dish to be set on fire, I'm slowly sprinkling this flaming alcohol over this plate of curry. Whoa, look at that! The curry is now on fire. I like that. I like this very much. That was very fun. Let's do it again. We're going to add even more rum this time. Light it on fire and pour. It also seems like the higher you pour it up from, the more the alcohol will splash and the bigger the flames will be, which is something that I am a very big fan of. Once the fire has died down, it is safe to assume that this entire plate of curry is pretty much drenched in rum. But how much of it is actually burned off from the flame? Well, there's only one way to find out. It is time to eat. Mmm. <clears throat> uh, 
When eating curry, I highly recommend not pouring an entire cup of hard liquor on top of it. The alcohol seems to still be there despite all of the flames that we have seen, and the spice is now making this worse. Although I really can't taste much besides alcohol. This really makes you feel like you're eating a super spicy curry. But how about a taste of this curry without the alcohol? Take a little bit of rice, take a little bit of curry from the pan, and I have to say the flavors are really, really good. The spice is hot, but the flavors are really nice, the chicken is tender, and the rice helps put everything together. So if you're a fan of spice, and like to take the heat as a challenge, this curry might be for you. Just don't wear anything flammable.